Wow, I'm, I was just listening to all the readings and all the hymns, and and uh, I, it just, I just feel overwhelmed. I think uh, this has got to be my favorite uh, feast day of the year, and uh, probably only one person gets that at Holy Redeemer. I think every Sunday I got up and said, this is my favorite Sunday of the year. <laughs> Because if you listen to the readings, God will do a, an amazing work in you every Sunday, every feast day. But when I listen to these, I'm like, oh my gosh, this, this stuff is good. Uh, and finally, I get to be the good guy because uh, the question is, who are these who are wearing white robes? <laughs> and I'm like, it's me. And they're like, where are they from? I'm like, Grand Blank. Yeah, because usually it's some rich man in hell who wore purple his whole life, and I'm wearing purple on that Sunday. And I'm like, man, I, I don't even want to stand up. It's like, yeah. But anyways, I want you to picture yourself as those people who are wearing white robes. Because if you, if, especially Catholics, I don't think I've ever heard a Catholic say, ah, Father Steve, I'm a saint. No one does that uh, because they haven't arrived yet. They haven't arrived, so they think they're not saints. But when Paul wrote, let's say, to the church at Corinth, which was a mess, he said, to the saints in Corinth, I write. And to the holy ones, to the saints, to those who are called saints. Yeah, we are called to be saints in, on earth as it is in heaven. So I want you to do something that Jesus told you to do right out of the chute. First words out of Jesus' mouth when he comes and begins to preach. Do you remember the first words he says? Change the way you think. We translate it repent. Metanoia. Noia means mind. Change your mind. Change the way you think in this world. And that second reading out of John, uh, it said... Uh, now you're called children of God. And so you are. You are children of God. And if you know who you are, then you'll know how to act. You'll know how to live. And so uh, I've never heard, I've heard people say, oh, I am so going to hell. And usually it's someone else, you know, oh, they're so going to hell. Uh, but we never really hear someone say, yeah, I'm called to be a saint, and I live that out every day. I mess it up every day, but I live it out every day. Every saint, every saint said, oh, no, I'm a mess. I'm not a saint. I'm just a mess. But the church has declared them to be saints. And if you look back at the white robe people in Revelation, it said of the Israelites, there were 144,000. What it means by that number is there was just so many, we can't believe it. And then for those who weren't Israelites, it said that. It said a multitude that can't be counted. Wow, a multitude that can't be counted. That's who the saints are. That's the number you're called to be in. So I don't mind humility. I think humility is important. For me, it's kind of like the basket we carry all our virtues in. If you don't have humility, you'd have, your virtues are just falling out and spilling out and you're not carrying them with you. You need humility, but false humility isn't helpful to anybody. To be, have false humility is to choose not to live as a saint, and Jesus says it in the gospel, blessed, happy, blessed are the pure in heart and the peacemakers and, and the holy ones. Blessed are those who are walking the way I called them to walk, who have changed their mind about who they are, who know that they are children of God. This is the way of the saint. John Paul II wrote something. Remember, you're all old enough, I don't see hardly any young people except you. You weren't even born, you. It was the craziest time. We were going to change, not the new year. 
And it was New Year's, but we weren't going to just change the new year. And it wasn't going to be a new decade, like, like we're going from the 70s to the 80s. And it wasn't even going to be a new century. Remember when it was going to be a whole new millennium? We were going into Y2K. And that was crazy. And there was all these prophecies that the world was going to end, you know. And, and so all that kind of, I won't go into it, but it was crazy. And John Paul II got in on that uh, new millennium stuff, and he wrote a document called The New Millennium. And, and uh, but, you know, it's in uh, Latin, uh, novo eniunte millennio or whatever. And um, so what he said in this uh, new millennium document is said that we are called universally, all of us, there is a universal call to holiness. Every one of us is called to be holy. Do you believe that? Do you believe that you're in that number? Because it's true. If you don't, change your mind. Listen to Jesus. Say, repent. Change your mind. You're not called to say, oh, I'm no saint. You're called to live that out. Now, one person who kind of lived it out, who... Uh, we can compare ourselves to, because most of us think, oh, she was no saint. And uh, there's a lot of Catholics who still don't want her to be uh, considered a saint. But when Francis came, he called her name out as an American saint. And it was Dorothy Day. <coughs> Anybody remember her story? Uh, she lived in the time where communism uh, was flirting with America and America some Americans were looking at that, and she was like an anarchist, and she uh, was a mess. She was divorced. She had a child out of wedlock, and she was working as hard as she could to help the poor in her city. She was giving them a place to live. She was giving them food. She was doing what Jesus called us to do to, in Matthew 25, to feed the hungry, to housed the homeless, and it was horrible. It was very, very difficult for her, and people thought, because of the difficulty, that she was a saint. And she said, don't call me that. Not because of false humility, but because she knew if people called her a saint, then they could dismiss her. They could label her a saint and then say, I can never do what she does because I'm not a saint like her. She said, don't ever call me a saint because everyone's called to do the good things I'm doing. Everyone's called to this life, to feed the hungry and to house the homeless. We're all called to that life. I can just close, I can tell much more. I want to go on and on because uh, I'm, I'm preaching to myself. Can you, can you tell? I almost believe it. Do you almost believe it? I'm almost there. All right. So I want to talk about those white garments because in the temple, in Solomon's temple, uh, the Holy of Holies, okay, uh, that represents day one of creation. Day one. And if you read, don't ever let uh, the Easter vigil go by again when we read through all of creation and they say the first day. Just jump up and say, no, it wasn't. It was day one. Because the scripture doesn't say the first day. It says day one. It was the day when everything was one. And that's what God's called us to, that kind of holiness, where we're all one, where we're one with God as well, and we're one with one another. It, if you read it in Hebrew, it was day one. And then on day two, you have in the temple that, that um, curtain that divides everything, that doesn't let you see into uh, the divinity, into where everything was one. We see everything divided. Because uh, after that, on day two, everything got divided. The lights got divided, and everything was created after its own kind. And so there's all this division, and we see all the division, and we can't see past that curtain where everything's one. And so in you, okay, the uh, high priest wore a garment that was covering up, like the veil, the, the fact that divinity was in him. 
And so we kind of wear that too, just, just our physical world uh, that covers up that the divinity is in you too. We have become partakers of God's divine nature. It's in us. The Holy Spirit is in us. We are children of God. And so it's veiled here, but we're called to know it's there and to live it out. That temple is now you individually, in your heart, in your soul. Your soul is the most amazing thing ever. But also when we gather together, we become that temple where everything's one. This, so much more to say. And I just hope that I wet your whistle and got you excited about living out that faith that we love so much because this is our faith. And what a wonderful faith we have.